I recently watched some flyovers in football games in America, and this was one of the aircrafts I think I saw that I said that it looks like a puzzle piece, and also that if I saw this, um, I would probably freak out because it looks like a UFO. Um, <laughs> but apparently it's a B-2 bomber. I'm guessing this is the same aircraft because it looks like the shape of it is so distinctive. Um, but today we're reacting to the insane engineering of the B-2 bomber. I'm actually super excited for this because it looks um, so different to anything I've ever seen before. So let's see what this video is about, guys. Oh, and by the way, I got this from my donations. So thank you for sending the request in and thank you for your support. In the dead of night, a whisper slices through the air. Unseen and unheard, it penetrates the world's most sophisticated air defenses. This phantom can deliver a payload powerful enough to alter the course of history, yet remain as elusive as a shadow. At $2 billion per aircraft, it's the most expensive plane ever built. $2 billion per aircraft? Excuse me? How? How does a 50 meter wide giant become invisible to radar? And why does it look like it flew straight out of a sci-fi movie? Hey, I'm your host Regis, and today we're diving into the secrets of the B-2 Spirit, the stealth bomber that revolutionized aerial warfare. From its Cold War origins to its cutting edge technology, we'll discover how this ghostly giant changed the game of global security. The year is 1975, the Cold War is at its frostiest, and the game of nuclear chess between the United States and the Soviet Union is reaching a critical point. Picture this, squadrons of massive B-52 bombers poised on alert at strategic air bases, each loaded with enough firepower to level entire cities. These massive aircraft were constantly kept flying or on high alert, ready to get airborne at a moment's notice, forming a critical part of America's nuclear deterrent. Flying out of Shepard Air Force Base in Texas, the routes varied by year, but in general, there were routes that went to positions over the Canadian Arctic, Alaska, Greenland, and the Mediterranean Sea. But there's a problem. The Soviets have been busy. They've developed air defense systems so advanced that they could swap these flying fortresses out of the sky like flies. As one Air Force general put it, sending B-52s into Soviet airspace would be like throwing a rock at a hornet's nest while wearing a bright red target on your chest. So what do you do when you're- That is so scary because obviously they need people to fly these unstoppable force is starting to encounter an immovable object in the form of an even stronger defense. You change the game entirely. Enter the Advanced Technology Bomber Program, or ATB. The goal? Create a bomber that could slip past Soviet defenses like a ghost, delivering its payload before the enemy even knew it was there. It was kind of like trying to build an invisible elephant, a seemingly impossible task that had engineers scratching their heads. But the it's so scary to think also that if these things were invented before the 2000s, imagine the things that they're inventing now. Elephant, a seemingly impossible task that had engineers scratching their heads. But this wasn't just about maintaining military superiority. It was about preserving the delicate balance of power that kept the Cold War from turning hot. You see, the whole concept of nuclear deterrence relied on the ability to strike back if attacked. If the Soviets thought that they could neutralize America's bomber fleet, the risk of a first strike increased dramatically. Now, little did anyone know, the solution to this problem had actually already been dreamed up decades earlier, and then quite literally smashed to pieces. Let's rewind the clock back to 1946. World War II has just ended, and while most of America is focused on building cars and suburban houses, one man is obsessed with a different kind of construction. His name? Jack Northrup. And his vision? The flying wing. Imagine an aircraft that's all wing. No fuselage, no tail, just one sweeping aerodynamic shape. It looked like something out of a sci-fi magazine, but Northrup was convinced it was the future of aviation. In 1947, Northrop's dream actually took flight in the form of the YB-49, a massive... 
Wow, that really looks like a, just like a massive, like two wings put together. And that's it. <laughs> it's literally a giant wing. Dream actually took flight in the form of the YB-49, a massive jet-powered flying wing with a 50-meter wingspan. It was very ahead of its time, but there was a problem. Without modern computers to help control it, the YB-49 was about as stable as a unicycle on a tightrope. The Air Force wasn't impressed, and in a decision that must have felt like a gut punch to Northrop, they ordered all YB-49s destroyed in 1949. Yeah, you heard me right. These flying wings were all destroyed, which gives you an insight into the aggressive research and development approach of the United States Department. I understand, but like, why would they make so many if like, they didn't try it beforehand? That doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't they just make one model and then try it and then be like, yeah, no, um, that's it. Why waste all these resources? Resor blah, blah, blah resources to make so many and then just destroy them. Gives you an insight into the aggressive research and development approach of the United States Department of Defense. But here's where things get interesting. Let's fast forward again back to 1978. The Air Force initiates the ATB program, looking for a bomber that can penetrate the most heavily defended airspace undetected. And who wins the contract? Well, none other than Northrop Corporation. It's like the flying wing rose from the ashes, ready for its second act. This time, armed with decades of technological advancement and a blank check from the U.S. government, Northrop was poised to turn the impossible into reality. But how exactly do you make a 100-ton aircraft with a wingspan that's as wide as a football field invisible to radar? Well, that's where things get really interesting. Okay, first things first, we have got to talk about that iconic shape. The B-2 looks like it flew straight out of a sci-fi movie, and there's good reason for that. The B-2s are Jack Northrop's flying wing concept from the 1940s cranked up to 11. But this isn't just about looking cool. Every curve and angle of this bad boy serves a purpose. You see, unlike conventional aircraft with their distinct fuselages and tails, the B-2 is essentially one continuous wing. This shape does two crucial things. It gives the B-2 an incredibly low radar cross-section, that's stealth speak for really hard to spot, and it also provides excellent aerodynamic efficiency, crucial for an aircraft designed to fly halfway around the world without breaking a sweat. It looks now, like a, let's zoom in on the B-2's material. looks like a spaceship. ...world without breaking a sweat. Now, let's zoom in on the B-2's materials that give it its stealth capabilities. The real magic happens on the surface. The B-2 skin is coated with top-secret radar-absorbent materials. These aren't your average paints. They're specially designed to absorb radar energy rather than reflect it. It's kind of like the B-2 is wearing an invisibility cloak. A cloak made of materials so classified, I'd probably disappear if I told you about them. As you can see in this radar cross-section diagram, even the way the B-2 is built contributes to its stealthiness. The aircraft's skin is made up of large, smooth panels with minimal seams, because every edge, every corner, every tiny imperfection could potentially reflect radar waves. Think of the B-2's exterior like a sleek sports car. No rough edges, no sharp corners. Just, you know, if that sports car was the size of a warehouse and tried really hard to avoid getting spotted by speeding cameras. It's so hard for me to imagine size uh, in, when I see an image of something. I wonder how big this would be if I was standing next to it, because here it looks quite small, um, but apparently it's big. <laughs> anyway, here's where things get really tricky. As we already mentioned, flying wings are not very stable. Without a tail, they tend to yaw and pitch, which basically means they just kind of tilt to the sides. To solve this, the B-2 used a fly-by-wire system, which is so advanced that it's the literal definition of top secret. This computer-controlled system makes constant adjustments to the aircraft's control surfaces, keeping it stable in flight. It's so sophisticated that the B-2 can pull off maneuvers that would be unthinkable for a plane this size. Imagine you're a radar operator and suddenly your screen just goes blank. Well, that's the spirit in action. 
The B2 packs four General Electric F118 GE100 turbofans, but good luck spotting them. These things are buried deep within the aircraft's body, with the intakes cleverly hidden on top of the wing. Why? Well, because nothing says, hey, I'm a plane, quite like a radar beam bouncing off a shiny engine fan blade. The exhaust is cooled and spread over a wide area at the rear of the aircraft, minimizing its infrared signature. It's kind of like the B2 is tiptoeing through the sky, trying not to leave any footprints. The airframe is made primarily of carbon graphite composite materials, lightweight, strong, and about as radar transparent as you can get without being physically invisible. The air the the like the shape of it is so interesting. Kind of like from the top it kind of looks like a regular plane, but the wings should come out of like the middle part, but instead of that it has like this shape over it. It still looks like something that, you know, I don't know, very interesting that someone came up with this. Strong and about as radar transparent as you can get without being physically invisible. The aircraft was built in separate sections, then assembled with the precision of a Swiss watchmaker. One tiny misalignment and boom, suddenly you've got a multi-billion dollar radar reflector instead of a stealth bomber. When the B-2 was finally unveiled on November 22nd, 1988, it was kind of like showing the world a glimpse of the future. As it rolled out of its hangar, you could almost hear the collective jaws hitting the floor. This was an aircraft that looked like it had been beamed down from a sci-fi movie, ready to rewrite the rules of aerial warfare. The technological array packed into this flying wonder was nothing short of awe-inspiring. With over 130 onboard computers controlling every element of the aircraft, the B-2 wasn't just ahead of its time, it was in a time of its own. It combined a variety of techniques to achieve its near invisibility. Its shape confused radar, its materials absorbed radar energy, and its electronic countermeasures jammed enemy detection systems. This graph dramatically illustrates the B-2's radar signature compared to conventional conventional aircraft. The result? An aircraft with a radar cross-section a thousand times smaller than that of the B-52, which on a radar screen would be kind of like trying to spot a pigeon. When the B-2 made its maiden flight on July 17th, 1989, it proved that all this fancy engineering wasn't just theoretical. This thing could fly, and fly well. It was the culmination of decades of work, from Jack Northrop's early experiments to the cutting-edge technology of the 1980s. The B-2 Spirit wasn't just a new aircraft. It was a revolution in aviation, a flying testament to human ingenuity and perseverance. This video is so well made, by the way. Like, the ed editing and everything. Props to whoever did this, because it's really good. Like, I can't believe sometimes this is free. I'm watching this on YouTube. <laughs> Now, let's talk about the capabilities and performance that this beast has. Because, in addition to stealth, the B-2 Spirit is a highly capable asset made to carry out missions deep in hostile territory. First up, let's talk everyone's favorite, payload. It can carry 20 tons of bombs. Basically, imagine squeezing 10 sedans into its belly. And we're not talking about just conventional bombs here. The B-2 is part of America's nuclear deterrent strategy. For your everyday, non-apocalyptic missions, the B-2 can carry up to 80 500-pound GPS-guided bombs. That's precision strikes on 80 different targets in one single sortie. Or if you're feeling a little bit more ambitious, let's say, it can deploy specialized weapons, like the GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator. At 15 tons, this bunker buster is basically a small building that you can drop on other buildings. Kind of like the Air Force's way of saying, we don't care how deep you dig, we can still reach you. But here's where things get really impressive. The B-2's range. On a single tank of gas, this thing can fly over 11,000 kilometers. That's like flying from New York to Moscow and still having enough fuel left to circle the red square a few times. And with aerial refueling, its range is basically anywhere on Earth. It's the kind of plane that can show up uninvited to a party halfway around the world and still... Aerial refueling? Does that mean that you can refuel your aircraft on the air? Leave before anyone notices. Now, you might be thinking, sure, it can go far, but is it fast? Well, at high altitudes, the B-2 cruises at about 901 kilometers per hour. That's not breaking any speed records, but remember, this is a bomber, not a fighter jet. It's more about the slow, silent approach than the flashy flyby. Plus, it can reach altitudes of 50,000 feet. That's almost higher than Mount Everest times two. It's operated by a crew of two a pilot, and a mission commander. And these folks aren't just flying. 
They're managing a suite of state-of-the-art avionics and mission planning systems that are so advanced they're in a league of their own. And get this, if GPS goes down, the B-2 can navigate using the stars. The B-2 can operate in all weather conditions, day or night. Its advanced radar system, which has been very controversial, allows it to perform terrain forming and terrain avoidance maneuvers automatically. But how much does it cost to have this kind of bomber in your fleet? Each B-2 costs about $2 billion per aircraft, which is more than the entire GDP of some small countries. That's billion with a B. To put that into perspective, you could buy about 5,000 average American homes for the price of one B-2. So why is it so expensive? Well, it's a perfect storm of costly factors. For starters, the technology is cutting edge. We're talking materials and systems that probably won't be declassified. The first one was a billion, right? So this is two billion, so two times better. But that's still, a, that's so much money that spent on an aircraft. I wonder how many of these they have. Did he say that? Classified until our grand. Sorry, I said they, but America has. Do other countries have these too, or is this just in America? kids are old enough to vote. Then there's the exclusivity factor. Only 21 have ever been built. Maintenance is another budget buster. That radar absorbing skin, well, it needs to be reapplied regularly. And let's not forget about the constant upgrades. The B2 of today is far more advanced than the one that rolled out back in the 80s. It somehow managed to age forward, getting younger and more capable. But is it worth it? Well, that's the multi-billion dollar question. Supporters argue that the B2's unique capabilities justify the cost. After all, how do you put a price tag on the ability to strike anywhere on the Earth without being detected? But even stealth aircraft can't hide from aging. The Air Force is already eyeing its replacement, the B-21 Raider, the next evolution of stealth technology. The B-21 Raider is to play multiple roles as an intercontinental strategic bomber and intelligence collection hub, hooked up to a larger network to make it the first sixth generation aircraft of its kind. It's meant to be smaller, more affordable, and easier to maintain than its predecessor, which would allow manufacturing a much larger fleet. So what do you think about the B-2 bomber? And would you like to learn more about the new advanced B-21 Raider? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you love learning about projects that push the limits of technology, make sure that you're subscribed to Megabuilds. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. These videos just make me feel like we know way less than what we think we do. Like, if they're able to make these types of planes, imagine everything else we would be able to make. Flying cars would already be a thing. I mean, come on. That's crazy. And to have that, like, started before the 2000s, already imagine just imagine and i wonder everything else they're making without us knowing that's scary um but leave your thoughts in the comments below i think this was such an interesting video to watch and now i understand more about this plane because i was wondering well not this one this is the new one isn't it um this one uh, because I was wondering in the other video, I said it looks like a puzzle piece to something bigger. Imagine it's like a puzzle piece to some spacecraft. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> but thank you for joining me for this video. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!